Hello and welcome to Upstech America's Oracle EBS Financial Functional Training. My name is Bob and I'm the lead senior consultant for Upstech America. And uh, with me today, I have uh, Victor, who is also a senior Oracle Financial Functional Consultant. And uh, today we are covering uh, General Ledger Lesson 7. And uh, Victor, please, can you walk us through? Uh, thank you, Bob, for the introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, and welcome to lesson seven of our fin uh, Oracle Financials Functional Training. Uh, these are the concepts that I'm hoping we'll be able to look at today. We have uh, journal categories. Uh, we are going to look at journal sources. Uh, those two topics are going to help us build a foundation uh, to look at uh, detail and summary transfers and the drill down feature in uh, GL. And then hopefully we are going to look at journal reversal, uh, uh, probably just an introduction, and we're going to continue in the next lesson. Okay, so let's get right into it. So let's look at journal sources and categories. Uh, what are journal sources? Uh, journal source is a feature of journals that tells us the origin of a journal. Uh, when we say origin, we mean how the journal or from where the journal was created. So let's say the journals that we have been entering uh, for our general ledger, the source of that is manual because we've been entering them into uh, ledger manually. And then we might have journals that come from other sub ledgers such as the account payables or account receivables. So when those journals are imported into GL, you'll see the source indicated uh, on the journal as uh, 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 indicating where that journal came from, okay? And what are journal categories? The category of a journal tells us the purpose of that journal. Uh, so we might want to label a journal uh, for it to reflect exactly what the business event uh, was. So some journal, some examples of categories are uh, adjustment, we might have accrual, uh, payments, we might have expense journals, we might have uh, uh, receivables journals, and so on and so on. So those are the definitions of the source and, uh, and category of a journal. Okay, so we have uh, two types of each. We can classify them into two types of each for sources and for categories. We have the seeded sources. So seeded sources are those that come with Oracle. And uh, so examples could be the manual, such as the ones that you've done, or the ones that show that the, the source of the journal is from one of the other Oracle sub-ledgers or modules. So such as if you're using uh, Oracle's account payable or Oracle's account uh, receivables, and those sources that indicate journals from those uh, sub-ledgers are what we can call seeded uh, sources. Non-seeded would be uh, sources that come from a third-party module. I'm not sure whether we've mentioned this already, but you should know that uh, you can use external uh, modules. What do I mean by external? They are non-Oracle modules and use them with Oracle. So, for example, suppose you don't like how your how Oracle account payables works. You might want to buy uh, another payables module from another vendor, maybe like QuickBooks or SAP, and you integrate it with your Oracle. Uh, so sources like those are uh, will be for non-seeded, will be in the non-seeded class because they don't belong to the Oracle's Oracle family. Uh, this is the same for categories, but seeded and non-seeded uh, might mean maybe a different thing, but let's see. So seeded are the ones that come with Oracle, and we are going to see examples of those and for the sources too. And non-seeded are usually user-defined. So maybe the categories that come with Oracle uh, do not define or do not describe uh, sufficiently to your liking the, the purpose of a, journals that you, a, a group of journals that you're going to enter. So you can create your own category, and Oracle let, uh, lets you do that. Okay. <clears throat> um, so I just want us to go to the system a bit, just to 
so we can have a look at um, journal sources and categories. So I'm going to go to the enter journals navigation. I have to log in again. So as I have said, we've been entering uh, manual journals because we we are doing GL and we haven't uh, done any of the uh, sub-ledger modules. So all the journals that we have been doing are uh, general ledger journals. We've been entering them manually. So and this is the window where we've been entering the journals. So the source is predetermined, it's manual. So on this window, you won't even see a field for, for, for the source because the source is automatically manual. Uh, here you will see the category. And as you can see, you can, uh, you can pick the category that accurately uh, describes the purpose of the journal. And you have a, a huge list of them that uh, that come with Oracle. Here you might have some uh, seeded and non-seeded because I don't know whether other users who use this instance have added their own, but uh, there's a huge list that comes seeded with Oracle. And uh, these are the categories uh, uh, that come that come with, with Oracle. Okay, so what we have learned here is that for the, our manual journals that that we are entering, we don't have a choice. Uh, for the source because it's, it's automatically a manual journal, but we can choose the category as as it fits the purpose of the journal that we are going to enter. So let's go back to our slides. <clears throat> so this window uh, summarizes and and gives us some more details about what I've just said. So when we are entering general ledger journals, the source will always be manual, but the category can be any that we, we deem appropriate for the purpose of that particular journal. Now we also know that we have journals that are imported from external modules. So for Im for imported journals, we also don't have a, we don't have a choice for for the source as GL users because the source is pre-posted. Because if it's coming from account payables, then the source has to be account payables. Or even if it's coming from an a third-party module, then that source uh, will be pre-posted on the journal. The category will also be pre-posted by the user who is transferring uh, the journal or whoever entered the journal. So we really don't have a choice for the for the category and the sources that we see on imported journals. Okay. All right. Um, so we have an option uh, to manage. Uh, categories and sources also and uh, this option is the one that lets us add new categories the non-seeded categories that in better define uh, journals that we are going to be entering and this is the navigation that helps us go to that uh, window so let's go to the system and close this so the navigation is uh, set up, journal, and let's start with categories. So if you do a full query, it will bring out all the categories in here, both seeded and non-seeded, if there are any. And you can see these are the same, the same um, these are the same categories that we saw on the list on the journal entry window. So if we want to add a new category of journals, uh, you come in here and add a new line. So what's an example that we that we may use? Maybe we want we want to add a category for our company Mascani, and uh, let's just say Mascani uh, fees or something like that. Maybe we enter mini journals for fees. 
So this is the name that we are going to see when we, uh, in the journal entry window, when we click on the list. What is the category key? Category key is uh, mainly like a, a back end thing. This is what uh, Oracle uses to look for the category uh, in the system. So this is mainly for the users and this is main, uh, this is main for the system uh, if, if if we can look at it like that but it can be the same thing as the as the as the category so we can just say mascani fees here also or you can enter something else um description you can say mascani is journal that is that's the description of this category okay so we can save our work and and close that so when we go to the journal entry window try to enter a new journal we can come and if we're entering a journal that's for fees maybe application fees for for a tenant for Mascani uh, property management, we can come here and look for that category. And we should be able to find it here. See, there it is, Mascani fees. So that's uh, how we uh, we manage uh, categories. We can add categories. We can uh, we can uh, remove them also. Okay, let's go back to our slides. Uh, we can also manage sources, and uh, that's the navigation. So let's go back to the system. Uh, we don't need this. Close. No. So the navigation is set up, journal, sources. Now, as you can see, this sources window is a bit different uh, from uh, the categories window. But if I do a, a full query, you will be able to see all the sources. Now, I believe all this should be um, seeded, but I don't know. Let me not let me not make that claim. So. As we from our description of what a journal source is, we said journal source is um, it shows us the origin of that journal, correct? So if the it shows us where it comes from, uh, uh, whether from, uh, in regards to the uh, external modules or whether it is a manual journal, right? So why would you want to manage your sources, add the, a new source? As I have said, uh, you can. You can you may want to use an external module a non, a non oracle module uh, if you are not pleased maybe with one that uh, the one that oracle has provided for that particular uh, business segment okay so if you want to add a new module you have to come in here and add a new source that will be used for that module so you do it the the same way click inside here and enter your new source so let's say we have what we have xyz xyz that does investment this is i'm just making this up as i go uh, so that's the source that's the name maybe of the of the particular module or the software that you have purchased to do with your to deal with your investment uh, journals or activities uh, the source key is the same as the as the category key it is used in the by the system in the back end when locating things that uh, are related to this particular source so it can be the same as XYZ investment or 
you can give it uh, another another name for the source key. So we're just going to stick with X Y Z investment. And then description, I can just say investment entries, entries, I'm just copying from what we have here. So that's the source management key, uh, Windows. However, as I said, this is a bit different. There are other features here and they are going to help us understand a uh, few other topics that we hopefully will discuss today so you see other options that you have here we have the import journal references we have uh required journal approval import using key and and uh, freeze journals we won't talk about the effective date for now so we are going to focus on these uh, four features so let's start with the import journal references I'm going to just mention it on high level first. So the source, as we have said, it helps to show the, uh, where the journal is coming from, uh, the external modules or sub-ledgers. So import, when you select the import references option, when you check it, it gives you uh, it enables Oracle to map back to the source of the journal and it gives users drill down capability, especially if transfers have been done in summary mode. And uh, we are going to look at all those drill down and uh, summary and detailed transfers. So import journal references option, it gives end users the option uh, to drill down uh, back to the to the sub ledger window when transfer of from the sub ledgers has been done in in summary mode. So take that uh, as uh, the purpose of import journal references for now. We are going to discuss it in depth uh, in a few minutes. What about required journal approval? It's a bit self-explanatory. Uh, so this option will will require all journals that are imported from this particular source to be approved first maybe by a manager or something like that before they are posted but in order to use this feature the you have to to enable the required journal approval feature for your whole ledger but that is the purpose of this uh, option required journal approval uh, what about the the import using key? <clears throat> import using keys. So remember that for uh, for for journals that are uh, imported from external modules, they are first dumped into the uh, GL interface table. So when you're doing the import from the GL interface table when you select this option import using key this is telling your import journal your import program to look uh, for journals from this source using the source key all right so you're telling it uh, to look for journals for this source using this source key when you select the the import using key option. Now finally, the freeze journals, what this does is that once these journals from the this particular source are imported into the GL tables, they cannot be modified or reversed. Remember, uh, you can delete or modify journals before they are posted. Correct? So before they are post your posted journals and they have affected the balance tables, 
you can delete them or modify them if there's an error. But when you select this freeze uh, journals option for this particular source, you won't be able to modify or delete the journals from this source uh, once you import them into the uh, general ledger. So that's how uh, these features affect uh, functionality in Oracle. Uh, we can save this new source that we entered, even though we don't have any module called XYZ. Uh, let's close this. and go back to our slides. So we have seen how we can manage our sources and categories. Uh, now let's go uh, to the detail and summary transfer, which we have already mentioned a bit. But just as a reminder, we know that external modules, they send uh, information, accounting information to the general ledger but it doesn't go to the general ledger directly. It is first uh, dumped into the GL interface table. And then from there, the journal input program, which belongs to general ledger, it validates this information per source before it is imported into uh, the general ledger. So, uh, what do I, we want to talk about detail and summary transfer. Information that is sent from these external modules to the GL interface uh, table and subsequently to GL can be sent in two forms. One is summary or detail transfer. Who determines how, whether it is uh, the information is sent in detail or summary? It is the users of the sub ledger modules. So GL users do not have control of uh, how this information is sent from the external modules. So it is these guys who are uh, doing the transfer, who are running the transfer, who decide whether they are going to send this information in summary or detail uh, mode. So what does summary and detail mean? When you're doing detailed transfer, this is what happens as shown on this slide. When you're doing a detailed transfer, there is a one-to-one -one mapping between the, uh, the lines in the sub-ledger uh, accounts and the lines in the general ledger accounts. So what do I mean? Take a look at this two, example of these two accounts. So let's assume this is coming from um, maybe payables and they're running a transfer to, uh, to GL via the GL interface uh, table. So when you do, when, when the, the guy from Payables does the transfer and does a, a detailed transfer, and this uh, information is imported into GL, this is what the information will look, at, look like in the GL and compared to the Sub-ledger, it's the same. So it's imported uh, line per line. So if there's a debit for this 2,000 account for 20, if there's another debit for this 2,000 account uh, for 20, then there's another debit. There's a debit for the 1,000 account for 50, and there's a credit for 30 for 1,000 account. If we do a detailed transfer, uh, this is this is what will be uh, imported into the GL, same as what we see from the sub-ledger. But what about, what about a summary transfer? If a summary transfer is done, then what happens is Oracle sums up all the activity per account and transfers a summary of all that activity, okay? So this line might have been uh, generated by one business event. This is another business event. So is this one, so is this one, right? But what Oracle does in summary transfer, it sums up all the activity per account 
and transfers it as a as a summary. So like for this, this might be two different uh, events, but they hit the same account, right? So Oracle will sum up the activity for this account. So it's a debit of 20 plus another debit of 20. And what will be taken to GL is this line, one single line of a debit of 40. For this account, there's a debit of 50, and this account is a, uh, the same account is a credit of 30. So the summary of that, the sum of that, the net of that is 50 minus 30, and it gives us a debit of 20. All right. So this one line in GL can map back to different lines, or different business events in the sub ledger. So that's what we mean by summary transfer. Okay. So I hope uh, you've understood that. So why are we looking at uh, why are we looking at uh, this summary transfer and this uh, detail transfer? This is all tied up again to the feature of uh, drill down. So let's look at what uh, drill down is. <clears throat> Drill down feature, it enables a user, a GL user, to go to the sub ledger window to see additional details about the journal that they are looking at. So we already know that a journal contains um, accounting information. So we'll have the debit, credit, and the accounts affected. And, and the date, right? However, there can be additional information uh, that uh, that pertains to that particular particular journal that we may want to see. Maybe the customer, or maybe the invoice number, or details like those. But we cannot see that from the uh, journal window itself in the in GL. So, what does drill down feature? allow us to do it allows us to go back to the sub ledger window and see all those other particulars that we may want to see that are concerned with with this uh, particular journal so how are this uh, drill down and the summary and detail transfers linked what is what is the association that we are trying to build so the drill down feature is always available when the transfer is done in detailed mode. All right. So if the guys in uh, who are doing the transfer from the sub ledger modules, they do the transfer they, because we said they're the ones who determine what kind of transfer they are going to do, summary or detail. If they do the transfer in in detail mode, the drill down feature is always going to be available to the guys who are using uh, GL and who might want to drill down to the sub ledger window and see the uh, other particulars that they cannot be able to see from the journal window. All right. So drill down is always available when transfer is done in detail mode. What about summary mode? Drill down is available for summary uh, mode only when the import references option is selected for that particular source. Okay, so this is how it, this this topic ties back to the source. So drill down feature is available for summary transfers only when we select the import journal references for that particular source. So let's go back to Oracle. So set up journal sources. Let's select do the whole query. So for example, if we had this module and uh, we did a transfer, or let's, let's use the account receivables, right? And we did uh, a transfer from account uh, 
receivables and we did it in summary form. Would, would we be able to drill down from GL uh, to see maybe particulars of that particular business event? Yes, why? Because import journal references option has been selected for this source. But if we did, let's assume uh, this is another module from where we can do transfer of journal. But if we did a transfer in summary form, in, su in summary mode from, from this particular module to GL, we would not be able to drill down to the subledger window to see other, uh, other details of this uh, journal. Why? Because the import journal references option has not been selected. However, if we did uh, the transfer in detail mode, we would we would be able to see because in detail mode detail, uh, drill down feature is always available regardless of whether you have selected the import journal references option or not so that's uh, that's the that's the usefulness of the of the import journal references option as pertains to uh, oracle functionality So now, uh, how does this affect you as a as a consultant? So one, we know that the guys who do transfers from the subledgers are the ones who are going to determine whether transfers are going to be done in summary or in detailed form. We know that we as GL, we know GL users, GL users do not have any control over that. So what do GL users have control over? GL users, we can give GL users control using the import journal references option. That way, regardless of how the transfer is done from the subledger, GL users will always be able to drill down back to the subledger window if the import journal references option is selected. So you would ask the client for who you're working for, who you're doing the project for. Do you want your GL users to be able to drill uh, back down to the subledger window? And then you, if they say yes, then you select the import journal references option for them. So that's how, that's how all these topics are tied from the sources to the summary and detail transfer and to the a drill down feature. Okay. So uh, this is a summary of, of what we have talked about. So we have said that uh, the drill down feature will always be available when we do a detail, when a detail transfer uh, has been done. Uh, drill down is only available for summary transfer if the import journal references option is selected in the source management uh, window. Now, we should know that drill down option is not available for non-Oracle modules. However, uh, depending on how the, the module has been written or how it functions, it can do transfers in either summary or detail or both kind of modes. So it can, the, we can have an external a third party module that does uh, transfer both in summary or in detail, but drill down option will still not uh, uh, be available for non-Oracle modules, all right? Okay, so, um, that's that's it for those three topics. So now let's go to general reversal. I think we're only going to do an introduction for this and and look at the the overarching concept of general reversals. Okay. So we have already entered a few journals in our previous classes, and we know that. Uh, once 
you enter a journal, you can modify it or delete it if it has not yet been posted, correct? But once you post that journal and it has affected the balances, you cannot delete it. The only option that you have is to reverse that journal. And what is a journal reversal? The process of journal reversal, it's, it involves producing another journal and that journal also has to be posted for that reversal to take effect. So once you post a journal, you can't delete it. The only option if you want to uh, eliminate the effect of that journal is to produce another journal called a reversal journal and to post that journal. So that should be uh, clear enough. Uh, so why would we want to do a journal reversal? The obvious one is to correct errors. If you entered a journal and posted it and then you realize that you made an error in en uh, when entering it, then you might want to reverse that journal. The other reason why we would want to do reversals is for adjusting entries. And we're going to look at examples of adjusting entries and explain what they are, all right? So in this slide, I want to demonstrate what uh, a journal reversal does. So look at this table here. It shows the balance for these two accounts, right? So this is the balance before any journal has been entered. So assume a user uh, comes and enters this journal here. So there's a debit to cash, which means cash is increasing, and there's a credit to receivables, which means uh, receivables are reducing. So this may be somebody paid us uh, money that they owed. Somebody paid this company money that they owed the company. So after you enter this journal, what happens to, after you enter and post these journals, what happens to the balances? This is what happens to the balances. So for cash, there's an increase, it goes to a five, becomes 5,500 instead of 5,000. And for the receivables, there's a decrease, it becomes, it goes to 500 down from 1,000. So assuming you realize that this, uh, this journal, there was a mistake and you want to correct this, but you've already posted the journal, what do you do? You have to reverse. So this is the reversal journal. So what will be the reversal journal be? It will be the opposite of the original journal, correct? So if this was a cred this was a debit, you will do a credit on this account for the same amount. So that's what we have here. We have a credit of 500 to the cash account. And then we have, this was a credit in the receivable. So we want to do the opposite for the reversal. So this will become a, a debit for the receivables. Then you post this journal. And what's the effect on the balances? You have these uh, balances right here. So the cash goes back to 5,000 as it was from 500. It goes back to 5,000. And the receivables goes back to 1,000. Sorry, this should be 1,000, not 5,000. That's a mistake. So this should be 1,000 uh, debit balance. So it should go back to the initial balance. So that's the effect of uh, uh, journal reversals. Now, as we continue to study this uh, topic, uh, we are going to see that Oracle has two methods of, of doing reversals, which is basically two paths to the same result. So as we have said here, uh, to do a reversal, we do the opposite of what? of what the original journal was. So this method is called the switching debit and credit method. And the description is self-explanatory. What we did here was just switch the deb what was a debit, it became a credit, and what was a credit became a debit. The other uh, method is called a reverse signs, which is basically the same thing, 
So if we had used the reverse signs on this uh, slide, what we were, would have happened is the amounts would have remained where they are. So the reversal journal would have been the same as this journal, but with uh, a minus sign ahead of the amount. So a negative debit is the same as a credit. And a negative credit is the same as a debit. So the reversal journal would have looked like this original journal, but with, uh, with the minus signs ahead of the amount. So those are the, some of the things that we are going to look at as we go ahead with this topic. Um, I don't want to look at, at adjusting scenarios and adjusting entries right now. I think we should leave that for our next class because it's a, it's a bit long of a topic. So Bob, unless you have something else to add, I think that's a good place to end our class today. I think we're good. Thank you so much. Thank you.